you ask me, why did they come? They used to hear that the streets in America were paved with gold. But they never lost their love for the old country. The families who came over on the boats, you know, had a real uh, glue of sticking together. They all came from either the same village or the village around the mountain. I mean, you grew up in Lebanon, you know, you go around one side of the mountain, there's another village. He came to America and started uh, with a bag of clothing and whatever else he could sell to people out in the rural areas. And he walked and peddled his goods. Many of them continued to speak Arabic or spoke in halting English. My dad's generation were completely English speaking because they were not allowed to speak in Arabic. And they really saw that you've got to dress like the people here and speak like the people. You can go to church you want to. You can have what kind of food you want at home. You can dance a dub key. But you know, when you're out in public, you've got to be seen as an American. I think there was that little community of a few and, and that was enough probably to sustain you, despite everything. Uh, you know, with success comes a lot of acceptance. What Lebanese is to me, it really centers around my grandparents and what their values were and their faith and that, that sense of, of honor of being Lebanese. And, and what the responsibility was for that. And then, you know, yes, we definitely were uh, Americans and, and we're Southern Americans. We Lebanese, we got mixed in the population. I mean, you, you've got people that came in in the early 1900s. I mean, they, you know, you hear the grandkids telling you, I, yeah, my grand-grandfather was from Lebanon, but they melted, they melted in the pot real good, okay? Uh, nowadays, you know, it's not as necessary. In the old days, you had to. We're not like the old immigrants who were born here, have their kids, their grandkids, and their great-grandkids, that they have a family already. Us, the newer immigrant, we are extended family to each other. In 75, we began to see a massive wave of immigration. A lot of people left, among them myself. We left the house supposedly for two hours, three hours. We didn't come back to it until about eight years later. So that's what I remember, is uh, running away from one village to another, hide here, hide there, get over here, there. And, you know, th that's, that's how bad it was growing up. You always went to school. School didn't stop, really. So um, we, uh, we would go under, you know, sometimes some shelling and whatever was going on, and we'd just walk fast and go to school. And, and because the, the, some of the world was not really in where we are and was like in a faraway area, so but you could hear it and you could tell maybe it's going to come on us. You know, despite all the hard time that we went through the civil war, uh, worrying all the time for the safety of, of my father and my family, the Israeli invasion, but I view it at the time, uh, living outside Lebanon for me is like taking a fish out of the water. Really, that's how I saw it. But I don't know, it seems like that fish have <laughs> managed to survive for a long time <laughs> outside the water. I guess, you know, like mom mentioned, it was sabr. I mean, I guess it was determination. It was, uh, uh, and, and we, we did believe, you know, we really truly believe that what we are doing was of a, of a great contribution. I think what, what gave us the biggest uh, boost in our business existence is when we were start to be discovered by the old uh, Lebanese, you know, the old comers, who they 
uh, come and, uh, and experience the true original flavor. And then the, the word get out, and that is when we start having people visiting from uh, practically anywhere, anywhere of the state, whether Wilmington or Asheville or anywhere, the word bec become that. When you go to Raleigh, go to this little bakery and, and experience the food.